Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened as they talked and discussed these things with each other. Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are the, you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are! How slow to believe that all the prophets have spoken! Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way, and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Alleluia! This encounter with the risen Jesus is always one I enjoy reading and engaging with. Here are two followers of Jesus, walking home, mulling amongst themselves the events that have happened in the last few days in Jerusalem. And as they talk, sharing their innermost thoughts and feelings about all that has gone on, and the as yet unrecognised Jesus drawing alongside them. This apparent stranger asks a question, and they give an account of Jesus, who he was, and what had happened in the lead up to his death, and the emerging news of his resurrection, all in their own words, framing this key moment in God's story for themselves. But the penny really hasn't dropped. And so this apparent stranger reframes their experience, starting with the scriptures, explaining why it was necessary for the Messiah to suffer. It was all God's work. And this apparent stranger takes their threads and weaves them into something different, something which sets their hearts on fire as they listen, so much so that they want to listen more, and they invite this apparent stranger in. And at the table, as he gives thanks and breaks the bread, this man is no longer a stranger, for their eyes were opened and they recognised him. I enjoy this encounter, not least because I, as many of you know, enjoy walking. Firstly, because there's simply a joy in being outside, whatever the weather. But there's also something about the rhythm of walking, 
particularly on a long walk when there's time to take a step back and think and bring a fresh perspective, to reframe, to reweave my thoughts and experience into fresh insights. Part of the rhythm of ministry as a Methodist minister is for me to take some quarter days, a few days every three or four months, take a step back from my day-to-day -day responsibilities. In the summer, I'm usually able to go away and spend time with a long-standing friend and to spend time walking and talking with one another. I value those conversations with him because we know each other well. We know each other deeply, deeply enough to share things openly in a trusting and safe space. And although my friend isn't a man of faith, more often than not, I've come away with a fresh insight into where God is for me and in some of the situations where I am called to serve God. Many of you watching and listening today will be spending lots of time with those in your home, but not all of you will have someone immediately alongside you in this chapter of life. Either way, can I encourage you to find someone to converse with about your current experiences, whether to talk to them in person or over the fence, call them, write to them, whatever. And as you walk and talk with them, tell the story of your blessings and your challenges and then just look and see who is talking and walking with you who is listening to you who is helping to make sense of all this for you and ask is it jesus and have you invited him in alleluia christ is risen he is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to these reflections, this short act of worship. Many of you watching will know that I'm Patrick, a minister in the north and northwest of Bristol and into South Gloucestershire. Minister for a group of churches in that area. If you're journeying from further afield, I'd like to express a particular welcome to you as we continue to listen to God's voice in this season in which I believe we can overcome fear through the transforming love of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, encouraged and upheld by the power of his gracious Holy Spirit. We've heard and reflected on God's word just now, and I'd also like to encourage you to read what Stephen has written for us, a link for which is in the description below. In a moment, I'm going to lead us all in prayer. Once those prayers have finished, please take a few minutes to listen to an Easter hymn and thanks once again to choir members from St Peter's Pilning for their singing. So let us pray. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! God of hope, embracing us, surprising us, loving us, be near. Creative God, as we adapt to a new way of being, distracting and busying ourselves, may we also seek to be present to you and to each other in this season of lockdown. Help us to know the presence of the living one, the risen one, in our being and in our doing, in our digging, planting, baking, reading, homeschooling, working, music, binge watching, video conferencing, cleaning, worshipping, connecting with each other. God of creation, as we bear witness to the springing up of spring in the beauty of your creation, may we rejoice in cleaner air and wonder at the blossoming of life amid such horror, longing for a new way of hope in your world. Living God, when we feel claustrophobic, crowded or even desperately lonely, our horizons of hope diminished. Lead us to restorative places for us, our still waters. Remind us that we are not alone. Call us to solidarity, to love our neighbours, to reach out and draw us close by our hope-filled spirit. 
God of all comfort. When we are fearful, anxious or overwhelmed, may we hear you whisper our names lovingly. Do not be afraid, beloved child. Tender God, when we are overwhelmed by grief and despair, you weep with us. Embracing those who are sick, holding the dying when we cannot. Present in a hand held, a smile, a word of comfort, love personified in doctor, nurse, care worker. Embrace them and us in our grief. God in the darkness, hold us when everything feels too much, when all we can do is get out of bed, but yet nothing gets done, when there's no energy to be productive. Help us to listen to ourselves and to love ourselves as you love us. And help us to remember that you do not measure our worth by what we do, for you simply love and love beyond all measure. Hold us in our struggles. Resurrecting God, when we long for a return of how things used to be, Open our eyes to the new thing you are doing amongst us by your spirit labouring within and around us. And may we discern new opportunities, yet also rest in the stillness. God of hope, undiminished and of new horizons, in this season of lockdown and physical distancing, you hold us through pain, anxiety and doubt through loss and longing, through unexpected and unbridled joy, and keep us enfolded in your loving embrace. God of hope, embrace us, surprise us, love us. Be near. Amen. And I invite you to join with me in the words of the Lord's Prayer in a version of your choice. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, as you walked on the road to Emmaus, walk with us on the roads we travel. Help us to know your presence with us. And at the end of the day, may we all enjoy your feast. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! This choice for Easter tide What need is there for grieving? Cast all your cares aside and be not unbelieving. Come share our Easter joy that death could not imprison, nor any power destroy. Our Christ is to is a risen, a risen, a risen, a risen. No work for him is vain, no faith in him mistaken. For Easter makes it plain, his kingdom is not shaken. Come share our Easter joy, that 
death could not imprison, nor any power destroy. A Christ who is a risen, a risen, a risen, a risen. Then put your trust in Christ, in waking and in sleeping. His grace on us suffers, he'll never quit his keeping. Come share our Easter joy that death could not imprison, nor any power destroy. Our Christ who is our risen, our risen, our risen,